Check one, two. Okay, that's working. Okay, I'm not going to redo it, guys. Okay. okay, question. Okay, good. Let's take a look at another one now. And they ask us, what amount of goodwill related to STARS acquisition should Penn report on the consolidated balance sheet? Um, and everything's U.S. GAAP in this class. I'm not going to get into IFRS. Now, this is why your question's a good question because there's a trick in here, right? They're making it sound like on um, Penn's consolidated balance sheet, but we bring the whole amount of goodwill over, don't we? And then when we figure out the, um, you know, the non-controlling interest share, they get a piece of that goodwill, right? Okay, but the whole goodwill comes over. Okay, so that gets a little bit tricky. But um, what happens? They pay 300000 for 75%. So if they're paying 300000 for 75%, we're going to take 300000 divide that by what? 0.75, I believe that comes to 400000 Now that one I can do in my head, right? That's the fair value? Okay, of what they acquired, 400000 I'll write it again over here. And then we go ahead and we see that there are what? We see that there are the book values. Book value is what? 220? Okay. But then they say fair value of plant and equipment was 60,000 more. So some of that total value of the company was going over towards the um, equipment, right? So we have to take that 60,000 out. So the book value less the fair value of the identifiable or the additional value, fair value of the identifiable assets now gives me what? 120,000 is left. That 120,000 is what? is the goodwill, right? And that total goodwill would be reported on the balance sheet of the consolidation, right? Of which some belongs to non-controlling interest, some belongs to the controlling interest. Okay. Number three. Okay, let me take a look at number three. And um, on January 1st, year one, Pacific Corporation acquired 75% of San Corporation's 200,000 outstanding common shares for 2,885,000. Blah, blah. And what is the amount of goodwill that should be reported at December 31st, year one balance sheet? Now, this is asking after one year, right? Now, can you make goodwill gooder? Is goodwill less in any situation? If it's impaired. And I look quickly at this question, and I do not see the words... Impairment. So I'm going to simply have to do what? Calculate what was the goodwill at the acquisition date. That's going to be the goodwill one year later, isn't it? Okay. So this question is really no different from the last one, even though they asked me December 31st, right? And when I say different, I mean in terms of process. So if they paid me 2 million, if I paid 2,850,000, and I'm going to divide that by what? 0.75. That means that the fair value of the company is what? 3,800,000, you say? Okay, great. Then what? Then the book value equaled fair value for all the assets and liabilities except land, which has a fair value of 200,000 greater. I'm not going to write the land, the word. Okay, I can write the word land. I guess it won't kill me. Okay, and then what? Equipment, which had a fair value of 
150,000. And then we've got this um, non-compete agreement. Is that an asset that shows on the consolidation? Does a non-compete agreement show as an asset on the consolidation? Yes. Huh? No. Non-competition agreement. Yeah. Remember, Conan, you invented the tri the the chip that's going to turn us all into ninjas. Okay, guys, if you're going to play that game of acting like I'm not speaking to you, then we might as well end the class. Is that where we're at? Because I don't have, you know, I don't care. If you want to end the class, we can end the class. So somebody does what? Somebody prepares a chip that does what? That allows us to walk or something like that when we're having a problem. And so we want to uh, we want to take that, and that's why we're acquiring the company, because we want to acquire that technology. Well, we don't want them out there inventing other stuff, so we have them do a non-compete agreement, right? We talked about that. Yeah. And so what happens? That's an asset because it has future economic benefit, right? It's an asset that only shows up where? On the consolidation though, right? Once we pulled you in and we're saying, okay, we're one company, right? Okay. And now supposedly whoever our invest, whoever we bought this from has gone down the road probably. Okay. So that is going to have what? Fair value of 150? Or what is it? 300,000. Thank you. Okay. So after I sign that to all these, you know, sort of identifiable assets, the difference that is left must be the goodwill, right? Which is going to be this 150,000. I mean, uh, I forgot the uh, I forgot the book value, right? I got to get the book value, sorry. Three million is the book value. What's the book value? Yeah. Three million? So then I'm left with what? 150,000? Okay. So the process was no different here, even though they asked me at December 31st, it was still going to go ahead and take the book value, take the adjustment, they don't show each one the way we did, and then um, they're calling it in identifiable intangible. So I guess, uh, I guess they're saying that uh, the non-compete agreement is a non, is a, intangible but you can identify right goodwill is also an intangible but i guess they call it non-identifiable i guess because it's invisible okay okay good and uh, this one is uh, pretty good because it gives us that initial journal entry okay so we can see that we would of course eliminate the investment we would go ahead and set up non-controlling interest. Now, you know, we didn't calculate non-controlling interest here, but if the total value of the company, what I showed you, we didn't. If the total value of the company was 3,800,000, 3,800,000 times 20% gives me this amount that they put into the non-controlling interest in the journal entry here gives me this 950,000. Right? Does that work? Okay. Now, we could just to sort of um what's your name? I'm sorry. Yeah. Johan, just to sort of answer your question, we should be able to get to that 950 by taking the um, pieces of the fair value and multiplying them by 20%. Okay, so let uh, fair value and the book value. So let's see if that works. So if we take 3 million, well, 
I'm not going to do it because it obviously works. Because the 3.8 is made up of what? Is made up of the book value, the non-compete agreement, the equipment, the land. So that's the total of the 3.8. And if I took each one, of, and, and then the goodwill, right? And if I sat there and I took each one of those and multiplied them by 20%, if the total times 20% equals that. 55%. Oh, I'm sorry, 25%, sorry, thank you. Times 25% gives me that, right? So it gives me that number that they use for the credit to the non-controlling interest. So if 25% of the total is that number, then 20% of each piece of that is gonna add up to that number as well, right? Yeah. Using the distributive law of multiplication. Okay, and so, um, so that kind of proves, maybe a little better than the slides that we were looking at, how 20% of the goodwill does belong to the non-controlling interest. And we're saying, hey, we're all in the same house now. They're in here with us. We're just saying this is our controlling interest share. There's their non-controlling interest, but they're still with us in this company. We're all one big company now. So you, I saw a picture one time trying to show consolidation and it showed, it was kind of scary because it showed a hand coming out of something that was marked P and then it was grabbing something marked S and pulling it in. So we're pulling the whole company in, right? We're pulling the whole company in, the entire subsidiary and all we're doing is parsing what portion belongs to the controlling interest versus the non-controlling interest. Okay, let's take a look at this one and this one wants to know what is the non-controlling interest that Penn should report on the acquisition date. And we've already had some practice with this, but let's go ahead and mess with it some more. It's what? It's 300,000 divided by what? 0.75 gives me, well, this looks like the same set of information, right? 400,000, but now they're just asking me the non-controlling interest is going to be what? Of that total fair value is 0.25? And so that is the same number that we just had a minute ago, isn't it? Why does it feel like it's the same number? What was different? I guess we, oh, this is not even close to the same. I don't know what the hell I'm thinking. But the process is the same, right? The numbers are completely different. Okay. Okay, good. Let's take a look at number five. Um, on January 1st, and for some of these, I guess it makes sense to see what we're looking for. What is a non-controlling interest at December 31st, year one balance sheet date? Now we acquire them, what, January 1st, year one? And we acquire them for 2 million, 850,000. Now these numbers are sounding familiar. We divide that by 0.75. That means we acquired amounts of fair value of what? 3,800,000? Okay, good. Then we went ahead and um, some of that belongs to the non-controlling interest 0.25 right so 3.8 times 0.25 gives me 950,000 and that was the number we had in that previous question where they showed us the journal entry right but now because they're asking me a year later I've got to now do my little statement of retained earnings what is their share of the income what is their share of what I got the beginning balance of their share of the fair value of the um, net assets but now I've got to say well what is their share of the income what is their share of the any dividends that were paid out right okay so the what the 
Um, There was um, the book value of the net assets, three million equal their book value, except land, which had a fair value of two hundred thousand greater, and which had a fair value of one hundred fifty thousand greater. On January first, had a non-compete agreement with three hundred thousand. What is the non-controlling interest to be pre uh, to be reported at December thirty-first, year one? Well, if they don't tell me anything about the income, that's a little weird. Then I guess I have no choice but to go with this 950. Okay. Well, that's a little weird. That's kind of a weird question. I mean, I thought what this question was going to do was make it interesting by telling me something that happened for the operations for the year. This is ignoring that by December 31st, something presumably would have happened with the subsidiary. I don't assume that they just sat there all year and just, you know, sat in a corner and made no revenue, had no expenses. So this is a little bit of an odd question. This is not a good question, I realized afterwards. I thought they were going to tell me some income numbers for the year, right? Which would have made it more interesting. You see what I'm complaining about here? The December 31st, by December 31st, something should have happened that would have increased the non changed the non-controlling interest. I'm assuming if they had net income, they pay. John, you want me to do a hypothetical problem? Okay. Well, let's say that the net income was of the of the subsidiary was two hundred thousand. And say that there were dividends paid out of fifty thousand. Huh? Yeah, net income for the subsidiary was two hundred thousand. Dividend. This is the subsidiary that did this. Okay. Now um, the only problem here is um, John is that um, there was land that had two hundred thousand and equipment that was one hundred and fifty thousand greater. So I'd have to take that 150,000 greater, and I'd have to go ahead and, um, because we're doing the non-controlling interest that we're bringing on to the um, balance sheet is at fair value, right? So let's just say that this $150,000 difference is over 10 years. So I'd have to go ahead and I'd have to, and that gives me what, uh, 15,000? I'd have to reduce the net income of the subsidiary by 15,000, right? Because the subsidiary would have calculated their net income at book value, but I have to do fair, fair value. So I'd have to subtract off 15,000. So the net, the income after the fair value amortization would have been what, 185? And the, oh, but it's not the full 185. It's what 185 times. What's the percentage here? 0.25. So 185 times 0.25. What's that number? He's working feverishly. <laughs> what? 46250 Okay, thank you. And then, John, we have what? The dividend? Uh, which, if I say that's 50000 but times 0.25 of that is what? 12500 12, which would be a subtract. So it's the beginning plus the income, but income adjusted for fair value, right? Minus the dividend means that the ending non-controlling interest that would show up on the consolidated balance sheet would be 950. You don't have to apologize. Apparently, everybody here thinks you work for them because they should be helping you add it up. 
becomes what? Nine hundred and okay. Okay, and we're going to get some practice with some other ones that do contemplate that level of, of uh, sophistication. What happens after one year? Okay. Okay, so I don't know why they said that December 31st and then they had no operational data. Okay, number six. This is more of a theoretical question. A 70% owned subsidiary company declares and pays a cash dividend. What effect does the dividend have on the retained earnings and non-controlling interest balance in the parent's company's consolidated balance sheet? Um, and in the parents' company's consolidated balance sheet. Okay, so what effect will it have on non-controlling interest? It's going to decrease the non-controlling interest, isn't it? Yeah. What effect will the dividend have on the consolidated retained earnings? No effect because it ends up being what? The parents' retained earnings that comes over and gets reported over there, doesn't it? Because the parents would have been accounted for this using the equity method, right? And we eliminate the retained earnings of the uh, beginning retained earnings. And the remaining change in retained earnings goes into the non-controlling interest the way we just saw, right? The net income minus any dividends, that all goes into non-controlling interest. So retained earnings is not affected. So it's no retained earnings effect, but it does do what? Decrease non controlling interest. Question on that one? Sometimes it's a little harder to see it when it's just a theoretical question. Okay, good. Let's look at. Number seven, these are all, all these ones with this kind of funny looking print, these are all CPA exam questions, okay? This is where the CPA exam kind of starts to get you, where they assume you know how this whole process works, and now they can start to come in and hit you at different points in the process, right? Okay. December 1st, year one, Starlight Enterprise acquired a 90% ownership in Lunar Importers by purchasing 90,000 of Lunar's 100,000 voting common shares outstanding for 900,000 cash. Additional information, what should be the amount of goodwill? So we have what? 900,000 cash. Divide that 900,000 cash by 0.9. That means that we have fair value of what? One million. One million. And then they tell me that what? That there's a book value and there's a fair value. So I got to pick up that fair value, don't I? Of the net assets. That means there's 200,000 left over that was not attributed with the net assets. That's the goodwill, right? Okay, number eight, um, Park Inc. acquired 100%. Um, okay, I went ahead and put this 100% one because remember, this is the practice midterm. And so I could ask you what, 100%er on the practice midterm because it's chapters both um, three and five. Three was, uh, uh, um, oh no, yeah. Three was, oh yeah, so what am I doing? So I don't know that this is a fair question. I don't think it is. Um, I think the reason I put this one in here because I wanted you to see how the research and development stuff works. Okay, so I just put this one in for kicks. Because 100% isn't on our test, right? Everything is going to be, should be from chapters three and five, should be less than 100%, right? Book value versus more than book value, okay? But I think I put this one in here. Now I'm remembering. I put it in here because I wanted you to see the way we handle research and development stuff, 
okay? And this was the only one that I could find. Well, I just I was just looking through for ones that were less than 100%, and then I saw this one, and I just said, I love you. I have to put you in there, okay? So Park Inc. acquired 100% of Gravel Company's net assets. On the acquisition date, Gravel accounting records reflected 50000 of costs associated with in-process research and development. The fair value of the in-process pro research and development activities was 400000 Parks consolidated intangible assets will increase by what amount uh, as a result of the acquisition and process uh, and the development activities. So we have what? We have Gravel has um, Park acquired Gravel, and Gravel has in process research and development of fifty thousand. Right. Meanwhile, um, the fair value of the in process research and development is four hundred thousand. So should we bring it in at its cost? Or should we bring it in at its fair value? We bring it in at fair value, right? Okay, and so that's a, presumably what we're acquiring. So the answer here is D. We don't worry about what the cost was. We worry about what its fair value is. We're acquiring fair value. Now, that research and development, um, the 50000 that they spent probably would have been expensed on Gravel's financial statements, right? Okay, but by the time we come in and acquire it, we br we're probably acquiring that research and development. That might be the very reason we're buying this company, right? Okay. So that was sort of the end of the uh, CPA exam questions. Okay, and then we had to unfortunately go back to the textbook for some of these, okay, to uh, round out some of these. We're okay, we don't need a break right now, do we? Okay, so let's keep going with this. Okay, so Perch Company acquired 90% of the common stock of Float Corp. For sixteen hundred, the fair value of floats, cloak of floats net assets was one million eight hundred thousand. Book value is one million five hundred thousand. What is the amount of goodwill? So we acquired what eighty percent for one million six hundred thousand. We go ahead and we divide that one million six hundred thousand by point eight. Two million even? Two million? Okay, like that. Okay, good. And then what? Then the net assets fair value is one million eight hundred and fifty thousand. So the rest must be goodwill, right? Something wrong? Okay. Okay, good. What amount of goodwill should be attributed to Perch at the acquisition date? And um, the amount of goodwill that, even though it's on the, the, the entire 150,000, will do what? Will show up on the balance sheet, right? But how much of that belongs to Perch is what this question is asking. We're going to show the whole amount, the whole 150000 on the balance sheet. But their share is going to be what? 150000 times 0.8. Times 0.8. Oh, gives us this 120. I'm not sure that I love that question because it's a little... It's a little tricky because you think perch, you think, well, that is they're asking me what's going to show up on the consolidated statement, and that's not what they're asking you. The whole amount would show up on the consolidated statement, right? Mm -hmm. What amount of goodwill is attributed to the non controlling interest? 150,000 times what? 
times 0 0.2, what's that, 30,000? Okay. What dollar amount of non-controlling interest that should appear in the consolidated balance sheet at the acquisition date? Okay. So what we're going to do is sit there and figure out what the fair value of the company was, and 20% of that is going to be the non-controlling interest, right? It's their share of the book value plus any... And in this case, the only increase is attributable to goodwill, isn't it? They didn't talk about it being assigned to any particular assets. And so I take what? I take the $2 million using that same fact pattern. 1600000 divided by what? 0.8 gives me a total value of $2 million. You guys told me. And of that, what? 20% is the non-controlling interest, right? That comes in. And so that's 400000 Okay. Femur. Is that Femur? <laughs> Acquired 70% of the voting stock of Harbor on January 1st, 2019. During 2019, Harbor had revenues of two million five hundred thousand and expenses of two million. The amortization of fair value allocations allocated to sixty thousand uh, uh, allocations totaled sixty thousand in 2019, not including its investment in Harbor. Femur had its own revenues of four million five hundred thousand and expenses of three hundred thousand. And they say, what is the non-controlling interest share of earnings for Harbor for 2019. So we've got to figure out the earnings for Harbor. Earnings for Harbor are what? 2,500,000 of revenue minus the expenses of 200,000, I mean 2 million. And then I've got to do what? I've got to pick up that 60000 additional amortization because that's going to reduce Harbor's net income because they should be accounting for it at what? Fair value by the time we get to the non-controlling interest portion of the net income on the consolidated financial statements, right? We take that extra, those extra expenses and we allocate some of that to the non-controlling interest income. Remember, the non-controlling interest income in the example was 10,000, but then we had to back out the additional cost of goods sold, the additional depreciation, the impairment of the goodwill, so it brought it to 7,000 something. So we've got to take out that extra amount of the, um, of the amortization. So that's what, a subtract of 60,000? So then that gives us that, and then you can see the calculation right here. That gives us 440 times what? 30% of that because they're only 30% of the, of the ownership, right? So the answer is 132. Okay. Okay, what would FEMA report as consolidated net income? Now, this one gets a little bit harder because what? Remember, we have consolidated net income, and then we have what? Non-controlling interest. We have controlling interest part of the consolidated net income, right? Okay, so we're going to have to first figure out, well, what was FEMA's net income and femur was what remember they told us that revenue was 450 expenses were 300 before considering any of the um, subsidiaries investment income so we don't have to sit there and worry about okay well what was the investment income of the subsidiary and how are we going to handle that right 
So they just gave us the separate. Then we have to figure out Harbor's net income. And we already saw that Harbor's net income was what? 2500000 And then we, I mean, uh, 2500000 of revenue. We subtracted out what? We subtracted out their expenses. And then we took out the excess amortization. It was 440, right? So the 1.5, which is the net income at fair value of the subsidiary, plus the net income of the parent gives us the consolidated net income, doesn't it? 1,940,000. What is this now? That looks like Camtasia trying to spin something out at me here, but I don't know who I should blame that on. I don't know who these people think they are. Okay, in the middle of my presentation showing this and wasn't anything embarrassing, I don't think, was it? Okay. <laughs> okay. For what though? That's what scared that's the part that scared me. I don't know. They way they follow you around these days, you know, who knows what I looked at that now they're gonna try to sell me. Okay? All right. Okay. Now you come over and so that's the consolidated, right? Now they come over and they say what amount of consolidated net income should be reported for the controlling interest in uh, harbor. So now we're trying to get Harbor's controlling interest portion and that's going to be what? That's going to be the total consolidated minus the part that we've already calculated belongs to non-controlling interest, right? What is this? I'm not clicking on it though. It's going to start that kind of thing. What is this, the Microsoft Store here that's doing this? Am I clicking on it somehow? Unpin from taskbar. Maybe I'm hitting it and I don't realize I am. Okay. All right. So what happens? We sit here and we have this what? We have it done this way. Is there another way to do this? Take the what? I don't think I'm doing all that. The other way to do it would be to do what? To take the 1,940,000, non-controlling interest is 132, so we could do what? Take the 80% that belongs to the controlling interest. Okay. Number 16, McHeath, Inc. Bought 60% of the outcoming outstanding common stock of Gnomes Inc. in an acquisition that resulted in recognition of goodwill. Gnomes owns a piece of land that cost two fifty, but was worth six hundred thousand at the acquisition date. What value would be attributed to this land in the consolidated balance sheet? And so we're going to pick up what on the consolidated balance sheet we pick up. Fair value, don't we? God damn it. What is the problem? No, thank you. Okay. All right, let's take a look at number 17 here. Actually, there's going to be a series of questions that will leverage off of this. What amount of consolidated net income for 2020 is attributable to Royce's controlling interest? Okay, so we're going to have to go ahead and calculate what the consolidated net income is and then pick up Royce's share of it. Okay, the controlling interest. So we're going to take revenues of 100 and... I'm not hitting anything. There's no way I'm hitting something. It's 
getting into one of those things where Microsoft has decided it's time to sell me something. And I don't know how to turn that off. Okay, so we're going to do what? We're going to pick up the parent's income. Parent's income is what? I don't know how to stop this. Okay, let me unpin that. See what that does. Boo. Okay. All right. So, so we have what? We have. You know, the pen I think is flipping out on me is the problem, because it keeps wanting to do something every time I go to touch. Yeah, the pen is the thing that's giving me a hard time. And I don't know what it is that it's not liking. I'm not doing anything wrong. I'm not using the pen any differently than I did before. Okay. Well, now it... Oh, you bastard. What is the problem? The pen has gotten on some weird mode where... It wants to change the screen just because I touch it. Right? So let's go ahead and take a break, guys. Okay, it's 7.30 anyway. Let's take about uh, 